welcome to this edition of Bremar TV. Here we are in the middle of the 6th annual Bremar Creative Arts Festival and we're here for the Festival Cayley in the Village Hall. In this edition we'll be hearing from Captain Alwyn Farkerson of Invercald. But first, here's some news of the Hydra Scheme. scheme has performed to design which is very encouraging for the directors and the 197 community members who funded the scheme. In that time we've generated 300,000 kilowatt hours of electricity uh, which is broadly to the design. Um, the summer has been relatively quiet because uh, for those who live in the village it's been quite a dry summer but September and October so far, we've been back uh, with um, you know, excellent generation, uh, exceeding the plan, in fact, because uh, September and October have been quite wet. Um, we had the AGM for the society in September, and at the meeting, the members approved the first contribution to the community fund, which of course is one of the key purposes of the Hydro Scheme, and £7,000 will be transferred to the fund uh, later this year, and that will be available for distribution during 2018. Primar doesn't have any other um, sort of sources of, of money in the sense that uh, many communities, for example, have wind farm uh, money is coming into them. We don't have that being in the national park where wind farms are unlikely. Uh, so the hydro is a, is a great benefit. £7,000 in some ways isn't a lot, but in other ways it's seed funding for, for uh, many other mechanisms to, to step that up and, and increase the community um, you know, benefit. We have a 40-year plan for the scheme. The first 20 years we have guaranteed uh, feed-in tariff revenue at, at quite a high level, which will support the ongoing community fund contributions over that period uh, and beyond. Um, to ensure good performance, we've just instituted a community uh, volunteer rota. So we have eight um, hydro investors who, who live locally who've volunteered to take a week each every two months and keep an eye on the scheme. They can check it online every day, make sure it's running. They come out once a week and brush any debris off the screens and do a visual inspection of the turbine house. So uh, that's great involvement and with that you know we, we'd hope that any any problems that do arise are quickly identified and, and rectified. When the Duke of Rossi was here uh, opening the scheme um, he uh, expressed the view that he would like to put one on the on the River Mick that runs past his his house down the road um, and uh, you know who, who knows what his plans are there is a there is a hydro scheme at Balmoral of course which is a similar size to ours which which is very successful for for reducing their power consumption the uh, feed-in tariffs for hydro are somewhat lower than they were when we commissioned our scheme and uh, so it would be more difficult to get a small scheme like this off the ground today, but no doubt the uh, pendulum will swing and renewables will be back in fashion soon. And yes, absolutely recommend anyone to be ready for that. Your late wife was very keen on the Yes, she loved it here, and um, she did a lot in, in the castle too. Um, as you know, she, um, she liked um, shocking pink colours and this sort of thing. Elsa Scaparelli was an old friend of hers, and um, yes, she, she and, uh, and, and we had a marvellous help uh, with us here too. We had this wonderful Latvian cook called Anna Goda, who looked after her wonderfully well. She had to be very careful. Yes, she loved it here, and she was always very enthusiastic about, um, about local things. You know, she had a shop in the village, and she had her crafts and everything she stimulated, and um, she was very actively involved in everything, and very good. 
she was an amazing, uh, she had an amazing memory and she could, um, uh, she remembered people and she remembered, um, uh, she, if she interviewed anybody or anything too, she could remember all the detail of that without taking any notes at all. Her handwriting was very dramatic. Um, um, you couldn't repeat it and it was so dramatic that I think, uh, yeah, you could have put it up almost as wallpaper. <laughs> but, um, but she could, her spelling wasn't too good and her um, uh, commas and, and uh, punctuation was um, a little bit haphazard. But somebody else could do all that sort of work. The main thing was is the story and it was absolutely there. I mean, she got everything, she could remember all the detail perfectly. So she was most unusual, she was very dramatic and very special looking. And of course, of course um, she was very much in the fashion world as well. And, um, but the idea of the highlands and everything appealed to her and the people who lived in it. And uh, she was, uh, yes, she was, she, she, she was very special, um, yes. And you, at, at some stage, you decided to open the castle to the public. Was that quite a challenge? What? You opened the castle to the public. Yes, one. well, it, it was a challenge in a way because um, one didn't know quite how it was going to go. But getting it ready to open to the public is quite a challenge. Uh, and we, uh, of course, in those days, it was before sort of houses that opened up much in this part of the world. For instance, Balmoral wasn't open. and. Um, we gradually built up, um, getting things a little bit better, learning as we went along. And I think we sort of got up to attendance figures of somewhere about the 30,000 or slightly more, I can't remember. But then, as I say, Balmoral was, we were not competing with so many others at that time. Um, but um, it, 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 um, it was, the, uh, at that moment, the tr trouble was, um, you see, uh, most of the um, moors and things that Invercorp were, were on lease when I first came here to the royal family and so on. And so we had to try and um, we didn't have, I didn't come into a great fortune and, uh, and a lot of improvements had to be done, in, uh, not just in the, in the big house, but in the cottages and all around. And uh, we did sell off the old houses, as you all know, to try and raise some cash to help do all this kind of thing. But we had to make improvements. And um, so it, it was not easy. And then as, as we didn't have uh, this, uh, rich people taking a sort of an important looking place like Braemar Castle, they might want not just a castle, but fishing or shooting or stalking or something. And uh, we didn't have a lot, so to speak, free to attach to a place like Braemar Castle. So it came to a moment when it wasn't too easy to get a tenant probably for the castle without attaching that sort of thing, which we needed to help us deal with ever called in the big house. So at that moment, we began to think, well, what can we do? We'd better open it to the public. And that's how it really started. And um, uh, so, uh, yes, it, it was uh, it, it's quite a challenge uh, to, to get it off the ground for a start. But it, um, uh, and we, we began in a fairly, fairly straightforward, simple way. And, um, but gradually it, it sort of got going, and now with the community involved and everything else. But, I mean, as time goes by, <laughs> what's going to happen next? And what, you know, are we going to have to sort of do in the way of repairs and, and maintenance and so on? As you can see, we look arrived today. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, repairs is, is obviously a big problem for us and we're planning to replace all the Harling. Can you remember at any stage doing works to the Harling outside of the castle? No, I don't think we did very much. Um, I can't really remember very much going on. It never happened in your time, did it, when you were... No. Well, we did a few patches. What? Yeah, we did a few patches, but that was all. Yes, that's right, yeah. And then we ended up, I remember when I arrived, the, the, the rear quarters were all 
you know, they were letting water in, weren't they? That's right, yes. Because you See, had a Victorian bit. That's right, because we used the rear quarters for staff and that kind of thing. Well, we were in residence here. Um, or for putting up um, staff in the summer when we had our castle open, like that. But, um, yes. And another wonderful story I've always enjoyed is, is your Bentley. What about the Bentley? Well, I remember it vividly, and, and yeah, uh, yeah. I think you used to drive it to Crathy Church on a Sunday, didn't you? Yes, I did, yes. Well, it was a lovely car, lovely car. I had it for a very long time. And, um, but in the end, um, uh, well, uh, I, I thought it, it was time, it, <laughs> time uh, for it to go, so it went. But uh, yes, I, I used to take it all over the place, Europe and everywhere, when we were on holiday. Yes, it's a lovely car. Your late wife was very keen on, on the arts and, and fashion, and, and I think they opened yes. up the theatre. She did, yes. Um, yes, she did. And we had some wonderful shows there. Well, um, there were, there were, I suppose there were too many churches in the village, really. Um, and this one um, was uh, surplus to requirements, put it that way. So what on earth can you do with the church? And, um, well, of course it was de... de what do you call it when... Uh, Delisted? Yeah. And deconsecrated. Deconsecrated, that's right. And so then she already, I think, had got her, her crafts going up in the hall and everything. What are we going to do with the church? So we thought to make it to a so-called theatre. And we, we had some, some really special shows there. And, um, they were, went very well. And uh, she, uh, she, she was a great catalyst in, in getting people going and their eyes going. And she didn't, didn't actually, she didn't uh, draw or paint or act herself, but she stimulated others and she was very much in that world. And I mean, she was always dramatic in her, in her dress and um, uh, yes. And so the, the theatre, so that went, went very well really and it was, it was, it was, it was appreciated. And you had a couple of shops, I think, didn't you? Yes, yeah, she had, um, she had the, the, the big hall, and then she had the, the, the little shop down, down at the bottom here. They were sort of different in their approach. Uh, the bigger one, she could put on um, exhibitions or a we weaving, or I don't know what she, I remember she had some Japanese girls over once doing some things. She had all sorts of ideas. And, um, and the smaller one down here was more uh, well. It, uh, it it was it was l local um, things, um, uh, uh, dress dress and uh, tartness and all kinds of things. Uh, yeah. Did you ever commission any new works of art or from any of the artists she was working with? Commission new works work? of art, theatre um, for the th or any productions for the theatre. Um, I think she, yes, she, I think she did once or twice, she did. I can't remember much about them now, but she did have one or two performances, local ones. I'm sure she did. And another uh, wonderful part of life in Bremer is the Highland Gathering. And you must have been coming to that for a very long time. Well, I never came to it as a, as a child, but I, I suppose my first one was when I came up here off the war. Yes, I, I only missed one. Um, I missed one because I had um, a, thre a throat thing, what are they called, um, I can't remember. Laryngitis? What? Laryngitis? No, it wasn't laryngitis, it was something. Anyway, um, I, I, I couldn't go, I had temperature and I couldn't go. And that's the only one I missed. Well, well I've been to every one. Um, and the same thing with ballot. I mean, I, th I think I've been to about 70. <laughs> something like that. It must be a record. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, and then the, the, I think your wife commissioned the Son and Lumiere at, at, at the, down at the theatre. A sound and light show, a Son and Lumiere. Uh, Son and Lumiere. Yes, she did. We had a Son and Lumiere here at the castle. That's right, yes, which she did. And uh, that, that was very dramatic too. Um, she, always, she, had, she had new ideas all the time and um, 
uh, yes, I remember that quite well. and I live in Braemar and for the last nine months I've been creating what you might be able to see behind me which is an installation called Unconsciously Observing Neptune. It's created uh, with a fellow artist uh, Karen Beatty who's a painter and I'm a fibre artist and we decided to collaborate on something. So our starting point was to find a venue. So about a year ago, we approached the St. Margaret's Trust and asked if we could use St. Margaret's as a venue for our installation, which they kindly agreed to. So then it was what we were going to collaborate on and we decided we would use two Victorian gentlemen that had a link to Braemar. One was Johan von Lamont or John Lamont, who came from Inverai and had this extraordinary journey from Inverai, a tiny little croft, to Munich in Bavaria and he became the Bavarian Astronomer Royal. The other guy was a guy called um, Ninian Komper who designed this amazing church and the beautiful stained glass. So for my installation I used the colours from the stained glass and the concept of the, of the solar system from John Lamont because one of the comments that's made in his biography is on two occasions he unconsciously observed Neptune. So he was studying the planets, he studied the stars and when he was looking at Uranus or Saturn, I'm not sure which one it was, he saw this body and he saw it on two dates and he, and he recorded it and that's what triggered me to think, okay, I'll knit the solar system. So that's what you see here, it's all been hand knitted and I've made a wee book that has got how many stitches are involved, how many hours it took to knit, everything has been measured and is in proportion. And what I was keen to do was to show people not only the relative size of the planets but also the relative distances because that's something you never see because they're so far apart. You never realize that the Earth and Mercury, Venus and Mars are so close to the Sun and Neptune is millions and millions of miles away. So that's what you've got here, is a representation of that. Uh, Jupiter is something like 24,733 stitches approximately. And so if each stitch took about a second to knit, it's over 100 hours to knit it. I started off with the smallest, so Mercury is something like three centimeters in diameter when you do it in proportion. So that took about half an hour and it was a simple sphere that I then embroidered. And then I worked up the planets. I got to Earth, which came after Venus. And Earth has quite a known and complex surface to it. I ended up knitting the Earth three times before I got it right. And then I moved on to Mars, which was tiny, that was okay. I then approached Saturn. I hated Saturn. It was just dull. And it was the first big one I did. I had to make the form to knit Saturn over. 75 centimeters in diameter. So you work out the circumference, you work out how many stitches you need and you start and you work your way up. 
it was a bit snug so I had to really stretch Saturn and then I decided to leave the, the rings until last so the next thing was Jupiter that was my last planet and it has such a beautiful surface to it and you get all these extraordinary images that have come back from Juno and Cassini and you think I've got to do it justice so Juno is a fair isle planet and I did a I did a plan of how big it was and how many where the different bands of color are it has zones and bands of different colors light and dark it's covered in storms and you've got the red spot that's been raging it's a storm that's been raging for about 300 years so I knitted that almost like a fair isle jumper and worked my way up it but that actually was easy compared to Saturn's rings that drove me demented because I had to work out how I was going to suspend them how it was going to work because one of the rules I set myself was everything had to be hand knitted and then I had a brainwave of using these fiberglass poles so I cast on 300 stitches and knitted out until I had a sufficient width and it worked I'm just delighted you look at it and you just think wow I'm not quite sure how it worked but it did Hi, I'm Susie Farkerton. I'm the president of the newly formed Braemar Rural. We were originally the Braemar SWI, which has been going for a very long time, with a committee and several members. Early on in the year, in April, we decided whether we wanted to stay in the WI or leave. The main reason being that the fees had gone up and they had removed the name Rural from the SWI, from the SWRI to the SWI. The members didn't seem to like this so we had a, a vote um, which we called Swexit and we are now a newly formed women's group but not under the name un, um, of the SWI. Um, the committee, the original committee have agreed to stay on. We held a meeting on Thursday the 12th of October. It was a very positive meeting with a big turnout of at least 30 ladies and at least 12 that made apologies that couldn't come. Um, it was good. We discussed what we would like to do and what fees we would pay. And we're holding our first meeting of the year in November and we're going to have a craft night. All ladies of the village are welcome. We decided to call ourselves the Braemar Rural because the SWI took the rural out of the name. So that is our new title now. The first meeting is on Wednesday the 22nd of November at 7.30pm in the back hall of the village hall and it will be a craft night. There will be people doing Christmas crafts, you can either bring your own craft or you can just come along for the social and just watch people doing craft, it's entirely up to you. We've decided to keep meeting all year whereas the, uh, the SWI before used to meet just from September to May and the fee for the whole year is going to be £10. We are asked the ladies at the last meeting what they would like to do at these meetings and we have a long list of things from gin tasting to history talks um, and various other things, um, theatre trips and things like that. So we're going to meet once a month and maybe a bit more regularly in the summer and maybe do some walking groups and things like that. So it was a very positive meeting, we've got some good ideas. The original committee have decided to stay on and help with the organising of things. Um, so there's, that's me, President, Marilyn Vice President, Mary Stark Treasurer, um, Secretary is Angela Till and Louise and Pat and Fiona McCulloch are ordinary members. So that's the seven of us will remain on to help. So if you've got if you want to know any information please get don't hesitate to get in touch with any of us. But all ladies welcome. My name is Chick, Chick Duncan. I uh, am a writer and uh, I'm here in Braemar for the, the festival 
the uh, Braemar Creative Arts Festival. Um, I'm here to write a poem, or, or two or three, or maybe more. So what, is this part of a project? Or? Yes, it, it's part of um, it's, uh, my time project, uh, organised by Voluntary Arts Scotland. Um, they've sent me here basically to attend uh, a few events and uh, write a poem about it afterwards. So you get the opportunity to take part in, in many of the activities that's going on for the festival? Um, yes, in fact this morning uh, I was um, I was trying to learn to play ukulele. Um, not very well. And uh, I've done a few other things. I, when I just uh, I arrived on Wednesday night and had just in time to catch the end of the quiz, creative qu- quiz. Uh, last night we had the, the dinner and some entertainment. That was fun. Uh, and I understand you um, you gave some entertainment at the dinner last I night. I did a, a couple of poems, yes. <laughs> and poems for anybody that's not aware? Uh, poems is the word that I use instead of poetry or poem. Uh, I spell it P-O-Y-U-M-S. It started out as a comedy word for, for children uh, when I was writing comic verse for kids. But now I just use it for everything, all the verse that I write for adults as well. And this is called Jungle Jangle. You'll be lucky. If a pussycat pulls on your chest, be impressed. If a pussycat pulls on your chest, you're dead lucky, cause cats are the best. Be impressed. If a pussycat pulls on your chest, but if lion or tiger or hungry bear invites you out for dinner, you better take care. You'll be lucky to get out of there <laughs> from the weather of a lion or tiger or a hungry bear. <laughs> I'm loving it here, yes. It's really nice. I've met a lot of great people, the people who are running the B&B and who run the festival, same people. Um, they're, they're lovely and I've, I just, yeah, I've met lots of friendly folk and uh, really enjoying the events. Well, that's all for this month. We're having a great time here in the Village Hall. Remember, this is your programme. So anything you'd like to see included, photographs or videos, please send them to the address below. Until next month, all the very best and goodbye.